Hello and welcome to Deward Studios. Today we are continuing our series on the parables of Jesus. Uh, last time I covered the parable of the master and the servant, and today we are going to be covering the parable of the speck and the log. Now full disclosure, that last video I scripted before I recorded it, and so I had time to think about it a lot. This one I am not doing that because I don't think it sounds as good. Just listening to myself read from a script the whole time was atrocious. I'm just going to read through it now and give my thoughts on it. I have some stuff pulled up that we're going to go through. So let's just go ahead and read the parable. Uh, it's a pretty short one, so it won't take very long. We'll just go ahead and read it, and then I'll give my thoughts on it. Oh, by the way, I'm using the English Standard Version. That's my uh, favorite translation. I find that most translations have the same core messages. The wording's just a little bit different. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce... You will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So that's the text. It's talking about um, judging others. That's basically the main idea of this passage. I see this one used a lot, especially the first verse, judge not that you be not judged, um, used primarily by people who aren't Christians to point at Christians and say, hey, you're being judgmental. Stop it. Don't you know the Bible says this? You, of course, hear it from Christians too, but I mainly just hear it used to condemn the actions of other Christians. So is that really what this says? Does that really say don't judge others all the time, never do it? Ever. It really depends on what you define as judgment. Ultimate final judgment, of course, belongs to God. That's his place to make those judgments. Ultimately, he decides what is right, what is wrong. The way I see it, the passage really isn't warning about not judging other people. It's more warning against hypocrisy. I mean, verse 5 says, You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. It sort of implies in there that you should take the speck out of your brother's eye, but first you have to remove the log out of your own eye. By the way, that's kind of a funny image of a, a dude with a log in his eye, and he goes, I think you got a speck there. So in that sense, it makes a very poignant point about you should not judge others for actions that you can very clearly be judged yourself for. But what about just judgment in general? Well, again, on the surface level, it seems to just say, judge not. Romans 2 verse 1 says, Therefore you have no excuse, O man, for every one of you who judges. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. And now again, that verse just seems to say on the surface, don't judge other people. But again, if you read it to the end, it says that the judge in this case practices the very same things. Again, that seems to be more of a warning against hypocrisy and not specifically a warning against judging others. So, can we make judgments about other people? To put it shortly, it's complicated. Let's look at a few more verses to see if we can find an answer to this question. Romans 14:10 says, Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. Again, this passage is saying that ultimate final judgment, deciding what is right and what is wrong, that's up to God. That's not for us to say. We don't get to decide what's right and what's wrong. That's ultimately God's call. But there's some other verses I want to look at, such as John 7, verse 24. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. So, what is right judgment? The way I interpret that, it means judging in accordance with God's judgments that we know about from his word. Judging with right judgment also implies that you can judge with wrong judgment. I think we as Christians can make incorrect judgments about other people uh, based on appearances or based on misunderstandings. Even in good faith, we can end up getting things wrong and making incorrect assumptions or judgments about other people. We may not mean to, and we may not have any ill will behind it, but that can happen. It's always important to remember your place. It's not you deciding what is right and wrong. You merely should recognize what God says is right and wrong. Maybe a better word for this would be discernment. Malachi chapter 3 verse 18 says, Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and one who does not serve him. That sounds an awful lot like making a judgment call. You're making a distinction between what is righteous and what is wicked. You're not deciding what's right, what's wrong. You're just recognizing 
what is right and what is wrong based on what God has decided is right and wrong. It also says you distinguish between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. And again, that's not judging them based on your own feelings about them. That's judging them based on their actions, whether they're serving God or whether they're not. So again, it comes back to God's judgments on what's right and what's wrong. Hebrews 5 has a verse on this as well. Uh, It talks about this in verse 14, but I'm going to go back a little bit so you can understand the context because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense without the context. For through by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now, the milk and the solid food thing, that's obviously a metaphor, but we're talking about the mature Christians here, the ones who have the power of discernment trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. So as mature Christians, we should distinguish between what is good and what is evil. And that's not based on what we think is good or evil. That's based on what God says is good and evil. How do we know what God says is good and evil? Well, mostly we can rely on the word of God, the Bible. Now, of course, making these judgments is difficult at times. It can take a lot of discernment and prayer to figure out if what you have a problem with really is a problem in the eyes of God or not. And again, this parable has an important warning about not being hypocritical. Not only does it look bad on Christianity when people who have major sin issues in their life go out and call out people for those same sin issues, it's just not wise to do because we won't really end up being much of a help to those people who are struggling with the same things we are. If we can't overcome it ourselves, how do we expect to help other people in overcoming it? So tips for discerning between what is good and what is evil as a Christian. A. Be in line with God's judgments because he decides what is good and what is evil. And B. Don't be hypocritical. If you have sin issues in your life, work on those before you try to work on someone else's sin issues. You can't go through life not making any judgments at all. Even people who accuse Christians of being judgmental, well, that's kind of a judgment. They're making a judgment call that being judgmental is bad. And even if they're right about that, they're making a judgment call. Isn't that judgmental? It's a delicate balance to strike. You want to be gracious and you want to you don't want to be insensitive. But at the same time, you should speak the truth and you should call out evil things when you see them. I'm a strong believer that when you see evil in the world, you should be honest and you should call it out for what it is. That's a very difficult thing for us to do as Christians for a lot of reasons, but it's not us that are making that judgment call. God is the one deciding what is right and what is wrong. We merely recognize it and fall in line with that. I hope this video helped. If you got something out of it let me know let me know what your thoughts on this parable are in the comments below i really hope to do more of these videos talking about the parables of jesus and do some more uh, other biblical topics in the future let me know if there's something specific uh, any specific biblical topic that you want to see talked about if you disagree with me let me know in the comments below i don't claim to be right about everything i think it's a good idea for you to go and look at these passages yourself read everything in context uh discern whether you think what i'm doing is right or wrong that's up to you to figure out whether you think what I'm saying is actual good advice or if it's just some lunatic ranting into his phone camera. Regardless of whether you agree or disagree, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll be back soon with more biblical topics to talk about. See ya.